And just like that, the uh, final episode of the recording session has begun. Welcome back to Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. I'm your host, Mega Shadow Fist, second video and second commentary. We last left off, excuse me, we were cross examining my FA. Now we're gonna end. No, we're not really gonna end things off. We still have a little bit left, I do believe, but we're gonna continue. Then why didn't we. Why didn't he wipe the writing off the lantern? Ah! You're right! Order, order, order! But, Mr. Wright, isn't it a fact that the killer is trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed, but it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow. Then, then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing. But if that's... But if that's the case, do you have an explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? Why would this killer move the body and remove all that snow? but then leave the bloody writing on the lantern. I don't know what the killer's plan was, but it's a fact that the killer left the writing on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Oh, no, 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 we can save. Why did the killer leave the message written blood on the lantern? I should have, I kind of realized that we were okay once the text is white instead of green, because it's only green when they have, we have to present the court record, and when the court record is open, you cannot save. I need to say this over and over and over and over again, because like I don't know, like I feel like I have to. I feel like I have to because people seem to. Uh, anyway, m miss a lot of the things that I say from time to time. Why did the killer leave the message written in blood on the lantern? The killer. Why did the killer leave the message written in the blood on the lantern? The killer wrote it. That's not a logical answer from this type of question. Why did the killer leave the message written in blood on the lantern? Like, cause like, that's not, that's not why, you know? To pin the crime on Maya, the killer didn't notice it. Okay, so the killer was Dahlia. No, 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 okay. To pin the crime on Maya, the killer didn't notice it. Cause it was Godot, and he couldn't see the red, is that what you're saying? If, if we're still going in the whole Godot train, the killer didn't notice it. Prosecutor Godad, earlier in this trial you gave me some good advice. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that a crime occurred that a crime occurred there. If that's the case, they wouldn't have left the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense! My to the torches were all lit and everything! There's no way any normal person would miss something as glaring as that! You're right. There is no way any normal person would. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have miss missing the bloody writing altogether. And who would that be? Who was the person that, would that could have failed to notice the bloody writing? This is a freebie, I think. Go die. Mr. Godot, this is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. You can't see everything! Is that correct, Mr. Godot? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like the court to think back to the moment it was first presented. This lantern! There's something written on it! Why? It's written in blood! Hmm, nonsense! This lantern is as clean as a whistle! Mr. Godot, just admit it. There are certain colors you can't see, correct? You can't see red on a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before, during the poisoning case at Trey B. Inn. This is a this is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time, and somehow sp and somehow spilled coffee on. There's something still bothering Miss B, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I already predicted this. You know, like eight thousand years ago. You're slow, game. That's that's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a bloodstain. 
Of course, back then, the way that they pre the way that they made this, it pre they presented it as if it was a joke. But um, yeah, I think it's fairly obvious that you legitimately couldn't see it. You could see the coffee in the white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup because it was red. Ha! It's strange. In a black and white photo, these letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder, why am I the only one that can't see them? So then, Mr. Godard, are you admitting it? Are you admitting that you couldn't see the red writing on the lantern? Hey, Gramps, didn't you know? That's the reason why I don't drink red tea? Well, you had a coffee addiction long before you adopted the Godot persona. Hmm. I wasn't sure about it until now, but I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Godot is the murderer, but there's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. Mr. Godot, the defense at this time firmly formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Elise Donium. Also known as Miss Misty Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true. However, once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disqu disquieting fact about you. Ha! Huh. Just make sure you don't fill out, fill out the indictment in red ink, Gramps. Come on. How does a little graffiti make me into the killer? Besides, it's not like it's my name that's written there. I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich. Go, do go on, Trite. The answer is right there at the, at the crime scene. In the snow. The snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all this snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If they wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not take up just that area? Yes, why didn't they take just that area? Ah! Could it be? Ugh, I'm really tired all of a sudden. Actually, I've been tired for like the past two episodes for some reason. Yes, the killer couldn't see the red blood that, it, that had seeped into the snow. And so he had to remove all the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. They would have been able to see fine. It seems that once again, this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Godot? Wait! Just, just wait a minute! Maya! What, what is it, witness? Mr. Godot isn't the killer! After all, he didn't even come to the Inner Temple! Until two days after the murder took place! He didn't show up until after the old bridge got fixed up! Objection. Maya. You can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? I may not look it, but I'm... Eee! After the murder that After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. She didn't. I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. Please, Your Honor, let me add to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. Maya, do you plan to cover for Godot no matter what the cost? If that's the case, then I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Ha! Huh. Nicely done, Trite. Very well, let's hear the witness's testimony. Please tell us what happened at the Inner Temple after the, inter after the murder. Yes, sir. After I woke up, I began channeling and my spirit left me, as it were. But that little girl was there at the Inner Temple, too. Witness testimony after the incident. Pearly was also stuck on the Inner Temple side that night. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. 
Who is this Pearly? That's my little cousin, Pearl Fay. Hmm. So when did you hear about? So when did you hear about this? Oh, just a while ago when I was in the medical office. I'm terribly sorry, but what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. What? Come on! Pearly would never tell a lie. She's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best things to say when you're under oath. <laughs> Ha! The prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. Mr. Godot! Let's just move on to the cross-examination, if the defense has no objections. This is highly unusual, but... Well, Mr. Wright? Let's get this cross-examination started. After the incident... Boy, I am tired! I don't know why I'm so tired. I guess because I basically did pretty much like a full recording session yesterday for the uh, let, uh, let's go random. That would have, that, by the time this goes up, it would have aired already. This will go up on a Thursday, and the let's go random would have gone up on a Monday. Actually, by the time that this goes up, uh, my new series would have started, right? Uh, if everything goes according to plans, that means that Lost Odyssey would have started by now, so, uh, for those of you who've been watching, uh, the first episode so far, what do you think? I don't know what I think yet, because I haven't played it yet, but what do you think? <laughs> I heard it's a really good game, so... Probably was also stuck on the Inner Temple site that night. So where did you think? where did you- So where did you- Where did do you- Where did do you- Whatever. So where did do you think Pearl slept that night? Oh, okay, I see. In the spare prep room next to the training hall, I guess. There's a rule that you can't enter the training hall during an accolade's training! But even so, why didn't you go to the inner temple in the first place? It seems that Pearls became very worried about Maya. She knew that the spiritual training I was about to undergo was very intense! Pearls was supposed to channel Dahlia Hawthorne, but she couldn't do it. That's why she headed to the inner temple. However, Dahlia Hawthorne was already there, possessing the body of Elise Doni. The next morning, she looked around, but she couldn't find anyone. She searched the entire inner temple side, end to end. Well, you see, Pearly gets pretty scared when she's alone, and there weren't that many places to look. She says that she even went back and forth several times. The inner temple site has two structures, the training hall and a spare prep room. And there's also a storage shack, I think. That's about it. There was a storage shack, too? Pearls is looking for other people, right? Would she have really examined a storage shack all that carefully? Well, if it was me, that would be the first place I would investigate! Hmm... So that means it's possible that someone may have been hiding in the storage shack. Okay, so let's let's look at what we just pressed. Okay, so... Next morning, she looked around, but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room! Pearls didn't hear the sound of them working on the bridge? What do you mean? I was just wondering why she would stay in the prep room. If it was if it was me, I'd at least go out and wait at the foot of the bridge. Oh, well, Pearly said she was sleeping at the time. She said she was so scared during the night that she couldn't sleep well and woke up a bunch of times. Poor little girl, all alone like that. Well, we know that she had at least she had at least one friend in the sacred cavern, Dahlia Hawthorne, who was busy battling with the trick behind with the trick lock. She couldn't let anyone see her. So she wouldn't have shown herself to Pearls. What hap What happened after the bridge was finally fixed? That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time! So it was your first time on the Inner Temple side, Mr. Godot? Hmm? That's funny. I imagine- Am I imagining things or did the defense ask me a question? Mr. Wright, please save your questions for the witness! What you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. Those are your words, Your Honor. Touché, Mr. Wright. Oh well. What do you have to say, Mr. Godot? Hot nights and even hotter coffee. That's what I always say. <laughs> what do you mean by hot nights, Godot? If it hadn't been for this case, I would never would have visited there. A freezing cold temple in the mountains? I think I'll pass. So he had never visited Hazakura Temple for the or the Inner Temple, huh? Ha! You wanna say something, Trite? In any case, I have to find a crack in Godot's armor. 
While I cross-examine Maya, that is. Very well, please go on with your testimony. After fixing the bridge, the policeman came over to the inner temple side, right? Yes, then Mr. Godot... He found Pearly first and cheered her right up! He cheered her up? That's what Pearly said! She said he was a very nice older gentleman! Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Godot! And here I was again, you were nothing more than a coffee addict! Ha! Cut it out. You're making me blush. This guy is really beginning to get on my nerves. In more ways than one. The truth is there. The truth is there aren't that many places to look on the inner temple side. The policemen men, were all busy going over the garden with fine tooth combs. So I decided to carry out an investigation in my own way. Godot style. I'm the same way. I like to hand down verdicts in my own way. Judge style. Hmm. Maybe I should ask some questions. Phoenix style. <laughs> okay, uh... Godot's investigation. You said that you conducted an investigation of your own. Did you find anything? It looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trite. After all, I didn't miss the bloody writing of the lantern. Well, I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, Goggles. The only, the only odd thing I discovered was the beauty in the training hall. Beauty? Misty Fay, naturally. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western taste. What Western taste? That place that you're at is so Japanese, it's not even funny. Like, it's, um, it's so Japanese, I have no idea why they're even trying to pretend that this is American. <laughs> Western taste? Could he find a stranger way to describe gravy? Oh, I see what you mean. So from there, you headed for the prep room? Wait a sec, what did Kodit say just now? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the Inner Temple when it happened. Otherwise, he couldn't have killed at least Donim. Okay, so let's go back to the last one and then press the other one. Next morning she looked- okay, so... Pearly was also stuck on the Inner Temple side that night, that is true. The next morning she looked around but couldn't find anyone. I would believe that. The next day when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the inner temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. Let's look at cheering her up. If you don't mind. Ha, ah, cut it out, you're making me blush. Mime Samway Judge style, Phoenix style, cheering pearls up. So you cheer pearls up when I found that little girl. Then the first thing she asked about was her cousin, Misty F or Maya Faye. Really? The bridge had burned down and she was huddled up in that thigh that tiny shack with no heat. Even though she must have had a truly terrifying night out there, she asked about you before she said a thing about herself. Pearly I noticed that you weren't anywhere on the inner temple side, but I couldn't find it in my in me to tell her that. So I gave her my last cup. with milk and sugar, to hide the bitterness of the harsh truth. <laughs> what a sweet story! <laughs> or, what a sweet story! <laughs> yeah, the thermos, a thermos of coffee? Why doesn't that surprise me? There's only one thing of any importance here. And that we have seen this. People, okay, so actually, hold on. Let me go back to the very end. What, what did Phoenix say? There's only one thing of importance here. I kind of missed, I, kinda, I sort of missed that, because I've only been half paying attention to everything. <sighs> There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the Inner Temple when it happened. Otherwise, he couldn't have killed at least Donim. And before we start presenting evidence, I want to go to the very last thing and then see Godot, where Godot was investigating. He said that he didn't get very much... He didn't, uh, when Godot arrived to the Inner Temple for the first time. That's when Godot arrived to the Inner Temple for the first time. So maybe we're gonna have to present something for that. Okay, so. Alright, and then let's skip past all this crap. But, dot, 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 Okay, so, Godot's investigation. You said that you would conduct an investigation of your own? Did you find anything? It looks like- 
I've been just... It looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trite. After all, I did miss the bloody- I did miss the bloody riding of the lantern, it's like, yeah, yeah, shut up, goggles. The only odd thing I discovered was the beauty in the training hall. Beauty? And that's when he said, like, Misty Fay, naturally. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Western tastes? Could he find a stranger way to describe gravy? I feel like that's actually something that he act that's- I feel like that's actually something that, that came from the street- That's a line that came straight from the Japanese version, actually. Um... So from there you headed for the prep room! Wait a sec, what did Godad say just now? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder- okay. Proverbial weak spot. Okay, so... He went to the second- to the other- the other room. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the inner temple for the first time. How did he know about the spare prep room, though? Hmm. How are we gonna prove that, though? Got to check button. For details, maybe because he found out from his, like, investigation found stuck in the pine tree, the inner temple, the blood doesn't match the victims. Warm blaze donium. Larry's sketch. Courtyard. Yeah, it's not gonna do anything for us now. Taking the night from main, dusky, main hall to Dusky Ridge. This is the only one that I think that we'd have to present evidence for, because everything else seems truthful to me. Taking the night from the main hall, Dusky Bridge. That's not gonna do anything for us. Elise's photo. Stab, body fell 10 feet after death. There's a sword, the actual weapon used to murder the, the murder the victim. But it's not the murder weapon. Regional weather report, night of the crime. Received before the lights out bell. Picking for our own pupil. Misty Faye's image is obscured by gravy touch check for details. I don't see how that proves anything at all. I don't think that proves I don't see how that proves anything at all. This is like a temple in the surrounding area. An occult magazine featuring But we're gonna present it anyway, because he did he did mention like the gravy and everything, and I don't even know what I'm I I I- I'm legitimately, like, I sort of took it a challenge on myself, too. Like, they said that, um, you know, they're like, Phoenix, it's time for you to do this on your own. I want to do this on my own, too. No looking up any walkthroughs or anything. That's what I want to do. I mean, just because, you know, end this with a bang. You know, with my own detective work. Burnt letter. Elise's autopsy report. For the first time. This doesn't prove anything, though. But... He did mention... Cause... Let me go back to this one more time. Let me go back to this one more time. Cause he's like, wait a minute, what did- what did- What did Goda just say? Ha 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 ha, cut it out, you're amazing. You're making me blush. Phoenix style! Godot's investigation. You said that you conducted an investigation of your own... After all, I didn't miss a bloody writing. Only odd thing I discovered was the beauty in the training hall. Beauty. Misty Fay, naturally. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Yeah, because it was covered in gravy. Western tastes, could he find a stranger way to describe gravy? So from there, you headed from the prep room. Wait a sec, what did Godot say just now? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. What? What? I don't. I don't see what it is, Phoenix. I don't. There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was going out when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the Inner Temple when it happened. Okay. Otherwise, he couldn't have. I mean, like I know, but like, what evidence are we supposed to prove? Like, I know what we're supposed to prove. We're supposed to go to the one that says, like, the next day when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. We had to present something for this, but what? Lantern for the Inner Temple. Perhaps we, perhaps we could say, how did you know that was odd? How did you know that it wasn't always covered in gravy for, like, a long... But then again, a normal person would question. A normal person would question why a hanging scroll is covered in gravy. But we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Mr. Godot, 
The first time he crossed Eskew Bridge and went into the Inner Temple was long before the murder took place. Then again, how would he know that it was Misty Faye if it was covered in gravy? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Why do you say that? Because he just made one fatal slip-up. The hanging scroll in the training hall. Hanging scroll? But... Mr. Godin is right! That scroll shows a picture of my mother! Maya, I know you know who it is, but here's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired, two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the training hall looked like this. What's that wonderfully delicious smell? The morning after the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy is much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Godot, if you really hadn't seen the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that it was Misty Fay. I mean, well, there is the master thingy, but that, still, the scroll could have been from any time. Wait a minute, Nick! Yes? Take another look at the hanging scroll! Look at the top! There's a crest there! Ah, that, it's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly! So if you know the meaning of the mark, then you could guess that it was a picture of Misty Fay on there. True, but Mr. Gordon described what was underneath like this, clad in her stunning Japanese garb surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Oh! Yes, it's possible that he knew that the, what the crest meant. However, he couldn't have known that she was wearing Japanese clothing. Uh, well, they're... Mr. Godot, on the day of the murder, <laughs> you were hiding at the Inner Temple long before the time the crime took place. Can I ask you just one little thing, Trite? What is it? This whole theory of yours. It all rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. That's right! Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Of course Mr. Godot knew about the plan. Sure he did! Yeah, he, he certainly did! Uh-huh! Yeah, yeah! I know you're gonna ask me to present evidence, game! I'm on to you! <laughs> From save point. Of course Mr. Godot knew the plan. I really do embody Phoenix in more ways than one, don't I? <laughs> huh? Uh, what did you say? Is it really possible that another person knew that knew of that plan? Oh, well, there was the uh, whatchamacallit, the burnt letter. This crime scene, this crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Faye authored the plan for her daughter's future, and these instructions were hidden somewhere in the Faye Manor for a year. However, by the time Little Pearls found found these instructions, they had already been unse un uh, unsealed. Unsealed. Yes, the killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place at the Inner Temple. And you're saying this crafty killer is me? You bet I am. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right! Mr. Gorda couldn't have known where the instructions were, hid were hidden! If he really wanted to know, he had one great chance to find out. Yes, and when was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Faye told her daughter, Pearl, about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center. That would be the only time for someone to have learned where they were hidden. He's dropping on a visit at the detention center? Yes, it could be arranged if you were somewhere within someone with easy access in and out of there. Like, for example, a prosecutor such as Mr. Godot. But a year ago... But, like, his first case was- his first case as a prosecutor was- wasn't a full year ago, but... Mm, it depends on when they visited. Order! 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 Mr. Godot, you're under fire again! This murder could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you! You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder! Humans are afraid of the dark, and yet, 
at the same time were fascinated but bewitched by it. Maybe that's why he would treat the darkness at his coffee. Um, sorry for always asking, but what does that mean? Am I the only one who actually understands all of Godot's, like, metaphors? I feel like they're actually pretty easy to follow, for the most part. It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped on a conversation during a jail visit where he learned of a hidden place plan of a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in the, hinder he hid in the inner temple and waited for the crime to occur. And then he ultimately took a person's life. And he did all of that just to protect this witness. That's right. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you. Why would I do this? This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. I've got no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. Well, we could just present Mia Faye's profile again. Because your real name is Diego Armando. <laughs> but what if this wasn't Diego Armando? What if this was like his twin brother? It's like, oh, you know, like, we already have one twin. Let's have another twin. <laughs> I am what you see. I am certainly not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. Hmm. The killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for a lack of a better word. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness's life, his behavior is still a little too unnatural. However, you had a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Godot? An unshakable reason th that forced you to protect the witness all at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya. I guess you were doing your best to cover for Godot. For the same reason, huh? Hmm, I see. Okay, Trite. I'm all ears. Let's hear it. It's very simple. Maya Faye is a lot more than just a stranger to you. What's this? There's one person who lies who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Faye together inextricably. Sure. Inextricably. Inextricably. Okay. Um, yeah, she really is at the center of this whole thing. Mia Faye! Normally it's Larry who's at the center of everything, but it's Mia in this case. I guess that's why I guess that's why they had us play as her twice when she was a rookie, huh? Yeah, she's gotta be a problem. Aside from Dolly, she's gotta be the single, single-handedly single the most important person in this entire game. Like, even more so than Phoenix, in this case. There's a very good reason why Maya Faye's life is so precious to you. After all, she is my, Mia Faye's only sister. Mia. Faye. You once worked alongside her. That was when you were a defense attorney. Wait a second here! Mr. Godot is... is a defense attorney?! With your honest piercing intellect, you must have figured it out by now. The real name of this man who calls himself Godot. His real name is... Diego Armando. Isn't that right? The last time someone called me by that name was over six years ago. Diego Armando. That name rings a bell. It should, Your Honor. All of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. Mia faced first time in court. The tragic outcome left a deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheming demoness in disguise. But in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, there was one man who reached out to help her. Diego Armando, a senior defense lawyer at the office where Mia worked. It's my fault! It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself! Mia, you can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Blood on his hands, huh? Interesting. I was moved by her. The way she put all her faith in her clients. That pure sweetheart of hers. That's why I could never forgive Dahlia Hawthorne. Mia and I thoroughly investigated that fake kidnapping incident. Then one fateful day, Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It had been six months since the trial. We met in the courthouse cafeteria. 
Ah, I just remembered! Six years ago, right here in this courthouse, you were poisoned. Even I didn't see it coming. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. Some newspapers at the time called it a murder, but very little information about the case was released to the press. But you weren't dead at all! No, no official reports ever actually called it a murder. I was just in a deep, deep coma. I see. My body shut down and my life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. That woman's poison did a real number on my central nervous system. I lost my sight, and all of my hair turned white through the damage it caused. That's terrible! Apparently it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years had passed since I drank that poison brew. Then one morning, my eyes flew open from the smell of a doctor's cup of coffee. Five years! You were asleep for five years?! And the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia Faye was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered, and the woman I loathed had been sentenced to death. The woman you loathed! The woman who had spiked my scalding hot coffee, Dahlia Hawthorne! Ha! Good old Mia. She didn't let me down. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. That's so sad! For someone like me, for someone who had slept away their best days, there was only two reasons left to live. And it was for those two reasons- Oops, I about to do a pop filter. It was for those two reasons I decided to become a prosecutor. If I may ask, what were your two reasons to live? The first was you, Trite. Huh? M me If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Faye never would have died, much less the way she did. Ah, I see. You were the only one who was there to protect her, but you let her die. It was all your fault. I- it wasn't like that- it wasn't like that! I wanted to see for myself what kind of man you really were. So that's why you became a prosecutor! My other reason for living. She goes by the name of Maya Faye. Huh? You mean me? You were the only way I could make up for the sin of not saving Mia. One year ago, when the Kudai channeling incident was resolved, it was obvious that Morgan Faye was planning something. Whatever her evil plan was, I was I, I was I, blah, 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 blah. I was determined to stop it. My role as a prosecutor put me in a perfect position to do something like about her. That's how you overheard Pearl's visit with Morgan at the detention center. I knew that the time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could foil it. My goal was to out with the plan. I thought if I could do that, I could keep that girl from being caught up in it. That makes sense. If Pearls had known that the actual purpose of the, had known that the actual purpose of the plan is to kill Maya, she never would have helped out. Finally, the day of the plan was drawing near. I contacted both of my accomplices. Accom accomplices! Iris of Azakura Temple and Misty Fay. I especially needed the help of Iris. She was to take the fall in my back in my backup plan in case we couldn't control Pearl Fay. But how did you talk contact my mother? She had been missing for almost tw she had been missing for almost twenty years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? About the strong ties between the main family and the government? Now that you mention it, Bikini did say something to that effect. She said that the Master of Kudain had, had great authority. Even without her official position, Misty Faye still would have great influence. The police have been keeping an eye on her moments, movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as a prosecutor. So my mother was cooperating with you? Don't ever forget, no matter how far away from you she was, she never stopped thinking about you. She was always... That's why I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you wanted to know how strong her resolve to protect you was, look at that staff. Her staff! The one with the sword in it! The day the plan was to be carried out arrived soon enough. We met for the first time at Hizakuna Temple. 
That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then, just how far she was willing to go. She was prepared to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Fay, if necessary. Yes, even if it meant paying the ultimate price. Mother! That night, the night of the crime, there was just one way to stop Morgan's evil plan. You mean pearls, don't you? And I think that'll be a perfect place to end things off here. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? I believe that uh, next recording session should be the last recording session if I were to go off of NCS's playthrough. Uh, I would say that the next the next one should be um, the next the next one should be the last one, depending on how depending on how uh, quick dependent depending on how quickly I go through it. Judging by his playthrough, I should have enough for one full uh, one perfectly full recording session. If not, well. You never know, I have to do like a let's go random mega test mega breaks with whatever to break things up, but yeah, that's that. Godot has been uh, cured of Godotness, and so now, what's next? I don't know. Or do I? Maybe I do know. Whatever the case may be, though, let's go ahead and end things off here, because I'm kind of tired. I still have schoolwork to do after this, though, which is not the best, but whatever. <laughs> <sighs> it is what it is. So let's go ahead and end things off here. So, if you like this video, this series of videos, please feel free to leave a like if you thought it was cool. Please feel free to subscribe and join Team Strawberry today. Also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash MegaShadowVist. I'll be sure to leave that in the, in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. And this is MegaShadowVist Mega signing out. Bye!